plan to make a New Year's resolution or two. Stop. Please don't do it, not unless you know exactly how to do it properly. For starters, I'm convinced that your planned resolutions spring from a motivational platform of self-incrimination, guilt and shame. These are the feelings that arise as a consequence or byproduct of your unhealthy actions. It is vitally important, however, for you to understand that this negative energy forms a very weak springboard for change. This feeble negative force can never give you enough momentum to catapult you to the success you wish to achieve. Let's have a look at two typical scenarios at this time of year and the ineffectual motivational springboards that commonly drive these resolutions for change. Scenario 1. Your doctor recently told you that you have onset emphysema and that you should stop smoking at once. So you thought about it for a while and chose to make it your New Year's resolution to quit. In this scenario, the decision to give up smoking launches itself from a springboard powered by fear. However, we know that fear is an awful motivator. Cigarette packaging carries messages of fear in the form of government health warnings, but these warnings rarely stop people from smoking. Instead, they compound the anxiety people have around their smoking and encourage them to smoke more to try to suppress their fears. Aversion tactics, motivated by fear, consistently fail and rarely achieve the desired goal. Scenario 2 you celebrated with reckless abandon this festive season and now feel so unfit, podgy and can hardly fit into your clothes. So you decide that you'll go down to the gym at 5am, three days a week in the new year. This strong need to shape up after a long period of indulgence seems well motivated, but if we investigate it a little deeper, we find that it is not really such a good strategy at all. In both of these scenarios, I bet that your motivation to change is not driven by an excitement for health. But my guess is that your feelings of guilt, shame, self-loathing and fear of harm, your negativity, are the main forces behind your resolution. Misguided as it is, this negative motivation may have enough energy to get you going and to start shaping up, but... As your body begins to respond, the momentum from a springboard of negativity will wane and you will start to lose your incentive and drive. This happens because negative motivational forces are inversely proportional to your state of mind and not harmonious with the changes you wish for. What do I mean? When your body is podgy, lethargic and won't fit into your clothes, when your lungs are congested and you can hardly take a breath, your feelings of guilt, shame, self-loathing and fear are at their peak. But as your body takes on a healthier shape with increased fitness, this self-negativity quickly subsides and dissipates, leaving you with very little motivation to carry your resolution forward. Each of these New Year's resolutions are in fact intentions to change one or other ingrained habit. But habits have their own anatomy. They are like a loaded gun ready to fire when somebody pulls the trigger. The metaphoric fingers that pull the trigger and fire off a habitual activity fall into a combination of one of these five categories. Mixing with certain people will do it. Specific places and locations will trigger habits. Your emotional state plays a huge role in driving an unhealthy action. The time of day can play a role too, like a metronome that pokes at the habit, forcing it to happen. Then we have events or happenings that link and associate themselves with the habit, like having a cigarette with the first morning cup of coffee or overindulging at the celebratory family table. It is therefore imperative that one cunningly analyzes and understands what forces lie behind one's habits before one can successfully implement any of one's New Year's resolutions. Naively relying on one's negative emotional reactions as a motivational springboard to power one's New Year's resolutions is stupid and prone to fail. Instead, you should dig deep into your habit's anatomy to thoroughly understand its triggers and the secondary gains you get from it before contriving a workable strategy to overcome it. Only then will your New Year's resolution succeed and then comfortably so. 
To recap, if you plan to make a New Year's resolution and want it to succeed, please don't do so unless you know exactly what you are doing, because improperly motivated New Year's resolutions usually fail. Failure then discourages you and hypersensitizes you to the triggers that drive your habits, thereby further entrenching it instead of changing it.